And tonight, an unexpected shift in the balance of power. Rome continues at nine. First on BBC Two, fly with condors, thanks to some daring aerobatics in a hand glider. This is the story of a woman who wants to fly like a bird, to soar like a condor. The Andean condor lives in a place of astonishing beauty, but also dangerous air currents. Flying here requires great skill, it's the ultimate challenge for a world champion hang gliding pilot. She's pitting herself against an extraordinary animal, a supreme glider. Her journey won't be easy. In Condor country, just getting airborne is hard enough. But it's the opportunity of a lifetime to take to the air and fly with condors. Patagonia, stronghold of the Andean condor, and a long way from home for a British hang gliding team from Derby. And poor old Uncle Fred, he spent 18 months in... Judy Ledden is a world champion hang gliding pilot. She and her husband Chris are in the wilds of Patagonia to realise a lifelong dream. To fly with another champion glider, the Condor. I've been a cowboy in Rochdale. Girls, people laugh when I ride past on our Alsatian door. Yeah. Judy has five weeks to achieve her goal. To stand any chance, she'll need expert help. Argentinian ornithologist Lorenzo Simpson is a world authority on South America's condors. Hey, uh, Judy, how are you? Hello, nice to see you. Hello, good right here? Very good, thanks. Hi, Chris, how are you? <laughs> Good, yeah. So, what's this? It's like England. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, it's cold, windy. Well, we're wet. expecting a bit of snow now. Are you? Yeah. The Andes are spectacular but treacherous mountains, with some of the most unpredictable weather in the world. These strong winds make life difficult for guanacos and even the sure-footed puma. But one resident thrives here, the Andean condor, the world's largest flying bird. Lorenzo shares Judy's fascination for these huge birds. For him, the condor epitomizes the freedom and wildness of Patagonia. The condor is the ultimate low energy flyer. With a wingspan over three meters, it can spend most of its day effortlessly riding the air currents before descending to roost. You can spot the females by their red eyes, while the males have brown eyes, plus a big fleshy head crest. My wife even wonders why I study such an ugly looking bird. But the thing is, what once it takes to the air is just absolutely magnificent. I mean, condors really, I think, are one of the world's best flyers. 
They may be good flyers, but that also makes them difficult to follow. There's so much information we can get on the ground, and then we just lose them. I mean, they just fly over the hill, and we've lost them. We've tried to have helicopters, we've tried to have planes, and all ready to no avail. Lorenzo hopes that Judy's silent hang glider can follow condors for the first time. I've always wanted to fly like a bird. That's why I started hang gliding. And so to have the opportunity of flying wingtip to wingtip and being accepted by them in their environment is my dream. Judy's been flying for over 20 years. If anyone can keep up with the condors, it's her. Their first stop is Lorenzo's research hut at Brutreras in the Andean foothills, right in the heart of condor country. These cliffs are a famous roost site. In fact, the name Brutreras means place where the condors meet. But these sheer cliffs give Judy the jitters. Remarkably, for a pilot, she's afraid of heights. I do have a fear of heights, and uh, I can imagine having a fair bit of vertigo on the edge. But once I'm in the air, I'll be all right. Once a daredevil in the sky, Judy now has two kids and is more cautious about leaping off cliffs. There is an element of danger, but there's an element of danger in lots of things we do, driving cars and all sorts. I'm not reckless. I don't have a death wish. It's, in fact, the opposite. I love this sport. I love to fly. It's, it's a life-enhancing experience. Judy's apprehensive before her first flight. This maiden flight will test the air currents, as well as her nerves. I'm not going to take off if I think I'm going to die. It makes it look so easy, it just steps off into space. Control all the way. Yeah, it's nice. At last, Judy can see Brutreras as a condor sees it. But today, all the condors have vanished. On her first flight, Judy attracts the attention of a black-chested buzzard eagle. I don't know if he's looking for food or... Oh, it's taken off. Let's come for a closer look. That's it, mate, a little bit closer. There we go. Isn't that nice? The buzzard eagle is a highly territorial bird. It even chases condors, so naturally it wants to check out this giant in its territory. The eagle soon realizes that this giant of the skies is too big for it to tackle. It makes a quick exit. Judy's first flight is exhilarating, but far too short. The problem is with the fine weather. Not enough lift to support her glider. What she needs are some strong, uplifting thermals. A thermal is a bubble of warm air rising up through the sky. Because warm air is lighter than cold air, it naturally rises. 
This provides the lift which is so essential to both hang gliders and condors. On a good flying day, the presence of puffy clouds in the sky indicates rising thermals. But today, a strong high pressure system is creating a layer of warm air that acts like a ceiling above which the thermals and gliders cannot rise. With the weather too poor to fly, Lorenzo has a surprise to show them. A condor chick, so high up on a cliff ledge that only an experienced climber like Lorenzo's son can reach it. The team have an amazing view of the developing chick, thanks to a remote camera. The chick will stay on this ledge, safe from predators, for eight months. Not far away, they can monitor the chick's activities. Wow, that's fantastic. This chick is two months old. I have to say, he's pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you can see every detail of the feathers. And he, of the can, he can, and he's you watching. See the, you see the size of his feet? Mm. Look at this Could huge, and they look like you know, an ostrich's or mm. South American rare's feet. I mean, they're just huge. Does he get fed every day, or is it just... Oh, almost every day, yes. I mean, Unless there's a big storm yeah, outside or something like that. But it's not there. Somewhere. Yeah, and they take turns. You know, one day it'll be the female, and another the male. Condors mate for life, and are devoted, though mostly absent, parents. This time, it's the male's turn to feed the chick. He's probably just looking around, making sure there's nobody around there. The youngster's just flapping away. There he goes. You see that yeah. pumpy action? Mm. The baby's put his bill inside the male's, and he's just pumping the gruel down his throat. But this is a very, very rare sighting, I tell you. You were saying that the baby looked big, mm. and then you look at it beside the adult male, and it's just mm. insignificant. The chick's only contact with its parents lasts for just three minutes a day. This chick will continue to be fed for another six months. Then it'll spend another year with its parents, learning how to fly in Patagonia's challenging landscape and developing a mental map of the area. That's something Judy has to learn in just a few weeks. The weather still isn't right for gliding, but she's eager to get back up in the air. Points into wind. Relief. She won't really know what the air currents are like until she's up in the sky. Soon after takeoff, she hits problems. Because it's freaking rough here, I don't really want to land. I'm going to try and get over the hill and land in the middle of it. What, where the green patch is? Yeah, that's what I made me for. I don't know if I'll make it. There's no lift. She needs to find a safe place to land, and soon. This is dangerous, and even worse, there are power lines in her path. Judy, Judy, Chris. Judy, Judy, Chris. Who go? Vamos.
Beauty, Judy, Chris. She's had a bad landing. No, looking around, it's not the best. Trying <laughs> <laughs> to get the cables up before this. Right. It just hit some really awful air. Mm. The glider's in bad shape. So just as I was coming in, I hit a big, well, just a big gust of wind. The left wing dropped, and uh, it just spun into the left. It didn't spin. It hit left wing tip first. So what you do in that case is um, make like a baby, curl up, and my body swung through the, uh, the right of right. With the power lines only metres away, the accident could have been far worse. The glider can be repaired. Judy seems OK, but all is not well. Yeah, I can see it is. OK, I'll sort that out. Her wrist is swelling rapidly. Uh, Judy's wrist is actually worse than she will ever let on. Uh, I mean, I've known her to fly in competitions with broken wrists and carry on. She's quite determined in that way, but I'm just watching her now. She's not lifting things very well. I'll strap up her arm, but at the moment I'm not holding out great stakes for it. Implications are of that. I can repair the glider, but she might not be able to fly it. Judy's dream lies in tatters. Her wrist is broken. Her only hope is that with a few days' rest and some heavy strapping, she might be able to fly again. is raging the Andes, 50 kilometers to the west. It sweeps down to Butreras, and on the wind come the condors, dozens of them. Butreras shows its real value as a shelter in a storm. The birds can fly in weather conditions that are impossible for Judy and Chris. The wind is fierce, but the condors have total control. holes in the cliffside provide ideal roosting sites, dry and out of the wind. Though Judy is grounded, she's keen to watch the condors and admire their flight skills. They can maneuver with exquisite precision to bring themselves into land. The condor's most impressive feature is its great wingspan, which stretches three meters. This combination of strength and design gives the condor total mastery of the air. Mm. 
Even when taking off, they need hardly ever flap their wings. This is the ultimate in energy-efficient flight. Lorenzo's discovered that condors are highly social birds. They congregate in large numbers at favorite roosting sites. And that little outcrop that the juvenile is on now, that's a sort of prime yes. roosting site. I mean, there's a, we've had a, over 120 birds on this roost site here. Really? But uh, whenever anybody comes, like we have now a few birds, they all try and choose this little outcrop. The older birds use impressive wing displays to intimidate the juveniles. Adult males are larger than females, but a large female can also throw her weight around. So who, get, who gets the best roosting site? Is it the dominant oh, male or the definitely. dominant female? No, no, dominant male. Dominant male. Yeah, luckily. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> The condors will wait out the bad weather snug in their roosts. The reason for their choice of roost site becomes clear in the morning. The cliffs face eastward. The rising sun floods them with warmth. This is where the thermals first develop, so the birds can just step off their perch when the time is right. To save energy during cold evenings, condors can drop their body temperatures. So the morning sun is crucial to help them get back to normal before they can attempt to fly. By 10 a.m., the thermals are ruffling their feathers. It's almost time to fly. First, a good stretch to prepare the wings for the day's journey. And then they're off. Adult condors have distinctive black and white wings. These markings stand out against the sky and perhaps help them communicate over long distances. By watching each other, the condors can find the best thermals. It's also possible that the markings allow the condors to spot each other when they find food. the juvenile condors are a uniform brown and only get their flying stripes when they mature at eight years. Lorenzo believes that adult birds may actually teach less skillful juveniles how to navigate through the skies with their markings leading the way. Condors are scavengers and each day may travel over 200 kilometers out onto the grassy plains, scanning the steppe for carrion. Guanacos were once their main source of food, but with the coming of the ranchers, they were replaced by sheep. Millions of them. Fortunately for condors, sheep on the wild steppe die naturally in large numbers. But sheep are also killed by predators, and the gaucho shepherds are at war with anything that endangers their livelihood. Many predators like puma and foxes, and even scavengers like condors and caracaras, have been killed by poison-laced carrion. The future of predators and condors is now closely tied to the management of the sheep. The condors are not usually the first scavengers on a meal. The fox is the biggest killer of sheep and takes first place at the table.
This activity is a clear signal to far-off condors. They let other scavengers eat first. They prefer to wait and make sure there's no danger. Condors are vulnerable to predators on the ground. They weigh 15 kilograms and cannot take off easily after a heavy meal. So they prefer feeding sites on hillsides with convenient takeoff spots. And if conditions for takeoff aren't right, they won't come down at all. It's only when the condor is beside other birds like the caracara that you can see what a giant it really is. Biggest birds will eat first. Although smaller animals like the caracara will steal a bite whenever possible. The condor's wing displays are a form of ritualized aggression to prevent real fights and injury to their precious flight feathers. A condor can add two kilos to its weight in one feeding, so getting back up in the air can be a struggle. By late afternoon, the birds are on their way back to their mountain roosts. With most of the condors' feeding grounds now converted to sheep farms, the bird survival is very much in the hands of ranchers. Lorenzo spares no effort in promoting condor conservation. Tonight, the team are on their way to an asado with the local gauchos. It's a relaxed barbecue. Patagonian style, and Lorenzo's preferred way to promote condors. His approach is working. Local farmers no longer kill them. And they're developing alternative ways to control the predators. It's week three of the expedition, and Judy is still grounded by injury and poor flying conditions. The condors of Potreras tempt Judy to try another flight, but her broken wrist is too weak to control the glider on takeoff. Judy's not one to give up easily. There is another way to get a glider airborne. Determined to get back into the sky, she's rigged up a takeoff trolley to help take the stress off her arm. And she's called in help from the local flying club. Not even Chris can stop her now. If I said to Judy, you should rest up now, my darling, and not be flying, uh, I might as well just uh, throw dust into the wind. And actually, if I'm going to do that, I'm just going to be stopping her from doing what she wants to do. So why? You know, it, it achieves nothing. Since the accident, Judy's been on painkillers. Yesterday, I let the ibuprofen levels drop down, and it was quite sore. So uh, I've dosed myself up again today, and it's fine. It'll do the job. For the bar, good. Yeah. Release in the right place. All I can do is try and support her okay. in what she needs to do and make sure that I can adjust things to make it as comfortable or as possible for it to happen. 
<laughs> if this flight doesn't work, okay, all out. they'll have to rethink the entire expedition. stage will come when Judy detaches the glider from the microlight. Not only will her wrist need to hold out, she'll have to find a thermal quickly to keep her in the air. She releases the glider and is amazed to find a condor. I'm just going to be great, Judy, stay with it. tempted into the front where this condor is. Yeah, nice and smooth. Do you know, these birds really know what they're doing, don't they? This is her first opportunity to fly with a condor. But will the bird allow her to fly closer? For one intoxicating moment, she circles with the condor. But then she starts to drop. Once again, the thermals aren't cooperating. There's one crucial thing a condor can do that Judy can't. Flap its wings and leave Judy behind. Now, the only way is down. This flight is a painful failure. But at least Judy's proven that it's possible to get close to condors. With few condors and no lift, this location isn't working. With just 10 days left, she'll have to try somewhere else. There's only one option to head deep into the Andes, to a place where Lorenzo knows there are more condors. Their destination, the most imposing mountain in the area, Mount Tronador. More than 200 condors are known to live there, but to reach them, the team will first have to climb high up onto the mountain. skills will be tested as never before. Here the wind will be stronger and will come from every direction. At 3,700 meters, Tronador is high enough to be capped by glaciers. The temperature difference between the cold ice and the sun-drenched cliffs is huge, creating powerful updrafts. Tronador is one of the most difficult, challenging places to fly in. The winds can be ballistic, and the terrain is treacherous for landing. 
Good draft coming up here, Lorenzo. Oh, it's a gale coming up here. <laughs> I can see one place where I don't want to land. <laughs> look at that one breaking Oh, it's going, it's breaking look now. Toronto, look listen, at that. Listen to the noise of it now. Tronador is aptly named. In Spanish, it means thunder. The next morning brings a warm, clear day with just a gentle breeze. One advantage of gliding is that you don't have to rise early. Both people and condors wait for the sun to start generating thermals. Judy is focused on the challenge ahead. She'll use a different kind of glider here, a paraglider. The terrain is just too steep and dangerous to land a hang glider. The thing I'm concerned about is when you fly paragliders, they are essentially parachutes. And that means that if you hit turbulence, the paraglider can collapse. The paraglider will also be easier on Judy's broken wrist. Uh, I've, got, I've, I've got full strength in the fingers. I can pull and push with no problem at all. It's just twisting that's an issue. And I think probably the pulling up the lines will be uh, painful. Judy should wait for the condors, but with the winds picking up, she's eager to go. Today, the condors watch as she leads the way. Good, great. 